brain separated by um, a longitudinal fissure, okay? And um, other grooves of the brain you want to know are uh, the central sulcus, which runs down across like this in a coronal way. In front of it is the frontal lobe, behind it is the parietal lobe. And the central sulcus is important because the, the gyrus here is called the precentral gyrus in front, and that's your motor cortex. Behind it, you have your postcentral gyrus, and that's your somatosensory cortex. Um, other lobes are also the lobe in the back. We have the temporal lobe here, which is separated by this um, lateral sulcus. Okay, so we have a central sulcus and a lateral sulcus. Um, your insula, your other lobe, is actually seen, if you take this piece off, there's your insula. So, then we're going to look at the bottom. And so from the bottom, you can see, basically, this is your olfactory bulb and tract. Um, we have, on top of it, we have your optic nerve coming in. We can see your pituitary gland and the infundibulum holding it. Um, as we go into this white area here, this is all brain stem. So at the very top, we have midbrain. Then we're going to have your pons and cerebellum. Then we have medulla oblongata. Okay. And also, you can see your mammillary bodies in this area here. So to see the brain better, we can just look at half of it. So all this up here is considered cerebrum, okay? Um, and what you can see from the outside is your cortex, cerebral cortex. If you want to see the white matter, you'd actually have to do a cut like this and to look inside, and then you can see white matter inside. So here is the biggest thing that's pretty obvious is your corpus callosum, and that's a very big commissure. So commissural fibers tie the two hemispheres together. You have two smaller commissures. This is the anterior commissure here, and your posterior commissure, number 13, here. Okay, so those two little dots also connect two hemispheres. Underneath your corpus callosum, we have a space called your lateral ventricle, okay? In real life, there is a thin piece of tissue membrane called the septum pellucidum that covers up the lateral ventricle so the, the fluid stays within one or the other ventricle. What you can see here, this is called the fornix, and we haven't talked about that yet in lecture, but it's part of your limbic system. It ties basically emotion and pleasure center up to the higher areas here. Um, so lateral ventricles here, so in this region we have a third ventricle, and so here we have the choroid plexus, this pink thing that will make the CSF, that you can see of your third ventricle. So the third ventricle is tricky because you can't really see it, but um, what you can see in this region is your intermediate mass, and when you find that, you know your thalamus is in this region, it's an egg-shaped region here. Thal underneath your thalamus, you're going to have hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus will be connected to your pituitary gland by the infundibulum. And then, and then here we have the mammillary body. Okay, so the mammillary body is considered part of your hypothalamus. Also in this region, we have your pineal gland here, number 22. So this is going to secrete your melatonin. And all the regions we talked about, pineal gland, thalamus, hypothalamus, mammillary body, um, pin, pituitary gland, these are all considered diencephalon, okay? So diencephalon, telencephalon, which is your brain, considered brain. Now we get into brain stem, okay? So the first part of your brain stem is this area here called your midbrain. And the midbrain has a groove running through it or a hole running through it called your cerebral aqueduct. And that's where your CSF, made here and here, can drain into this wide area, and that's considered your fourth ventricle. It also will have a little choroid plexus that makes um, CSF. But then everything kind of drains down into this, the um, spinal cord or around the subarachnoid space around the brain. So, um, midbrain. This portion of the midbrain in front is called the peduncles and contains tracks that go up and down, right, connecting the brain and the brain stem. This part of the midbrain is called your tectum, or the roof of the midbrain, and it has four bumps called the corpora quadrigemina. Two bumps on top are called the superior colliculi. Two bumps on the bottom are your inferior colliculi. So this superior colliculus is for auditory, sorry, visual reflexes and auditory reflexes. So as we travel down, the next section we see is your Met encephalon, so this is your mes encephalon, met encephalon, pons, and cerebellum. Pons is pretty much just a bunch of fibers that ties the cerebellum in to relay messages to the brain and down and carry up. So pons is basically just lots of peduncles, which is tracks. And then cerebellum, 
motor, motor movement, fine motor, motor memory. Folia are the ridges on top. Arbor vitae are the white areas inside. Okay. Um, if we want to see this uh, medulla oblongata, which is the myelencephalon, then we close this up. And here, the two tracks down the middle of the um, medulla are called pyramidal tracks or pyramids because they're going to carry motor control down the spinal cord. And then motor, since your right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, the tracks actually crisscross down here in the inferior medulla. You can't see the crisscross, but it's happening. Um, here and here we have the um, olives, okay, or olivary nuclei. And those are guys are going to process your, receive your um, proprioceptive information, okay? And in the real body, um, you, the pons doesn't have this gap, this line, oops, <laughs> but the uh, medulla does. So the medulla actually has this, um, this anterior median fissure here. Okay, so that's actually true. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Okay, whoops.